Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at the refraction of light. Refraction of light. So these are some of the equipment. Illuminated object, screen, converging lens, optical bench, lens holder, and a meter rule. So let's look at them. This is our meter rule. This is our screen. This is our illuminated object. This is our lens and then the lens holder. And then this is our optical bench, right? So this is the setup. So first of all, so this is how it looks. First of all, we are supposed to focus, we focus a distance object from outside the lab, something like the trees, right? And then we see the trees through our lens on our screen. So this is our lens. You see, we can see the trees here. You can check well. These are the trees, right? The trees that are outside the lab. That's it, right? Now, we need to adjust the lens till we get the sharpest image of the trees on the screen, right? So we can adjust it right, to get the sharpest image. So this is our sharpest image. So this is our sharpest image of the trees that we can see see so that tree over there that's it over here but you can notice something what we can notice here is that the trees we are seeing on the screen are upside down if you can notice you realize that the trees the tree is upside down right it is upside down this is the top and then this side is the down part so that's the top right so that one is upside down. And that's why, because of the property of the kind of lens we are using. We are using the converging lens, right? So converging lenses gives images that are inverted, right? So that's why we are seeing the invertedness of these trees over there. So we will have to measure, now that we know that, we measure the distance from this point, the center, right? The center the center over here to the center over here. So we measure the distance from here to here. So we can use our rule, right? We can take our meter rule and then we measure the distance from here to here, right? So we are getting 14, right? 14. So we are getting 14. So our F, our F, is giving us 14 centimeters, right? Now, the next thing that we do is, we need to set, now we need to set our illuminated object and then our screen more than four F apart. See, more than four F apart. More than four F apart. So we have to set, the, so the distance between, so our L, our L is supposed to be equal to more than more than 4F apart. Okay, more than 4F apart. So 14 times 4, 15 times 4 is supposed to be 60. So minus 4 is supposed to be 56, right? So 14 times 4 will be 56, right? 56. 56. That is F, right? So F times 4, our F, which is 14 times 4, is supposed to be 56, right? So we'll be setting the distance between our uh, illuminated object, which is our bulb, this bulb and then our screen to be more than 4F apart. Okay, so let's look at how we'll do it. 
So we are not placing it exactly on 56, right? We are not placing this exactly on 56. They said it should be more than 4F apart. So we can use, we can decide to set this at 60, right? We can decide to use L, L as 60, because 60 centimeters is more than 56. It should be more than 4F apart, right? It should be more than 56. This is 4F. So 60 centimeters is more than 4F apart. So we'll be setting our illuminated object and the screen. Our screen, this is our screen, and then our bulb more than 4F apart. Then we can on the bulb. So let's look at it. Now, why are we setting this, our illuminated object and the screen more than 4F apart? One of the properties of the converging lens is that for a magnified image, and then for a magnified image to be formed, the screen has to be set at more than 4F apart, right? Because if it's less than 4F, the magnified image that we are looking for, for, the, for this bulb, the filament inside the bulb, you will, not, you will not see it, right? We wouldn't see the magnified image when it's less than 4F. So we need to set our distance, right, from the illuminated object and the screen more than 4F apart before we can see the magnified image of this bulb, right? So that's the reason why we set it more than 4F apart. Okay. So let's look at it. Let's look at how we'll do it. So we own this. So now that I've owned this, right, so I can own this. Now I have to measure have to measure, I have to measure from here to here to be equal to 60, right? So I'll take my meter rule. I place it here. So this is my 60. This is my 60 centimeter mark, right? This is my 60 centimeter, right? Then I put this one aside. Now, the next thing I'll do is, I have to locate two two images of the filament, right? The filament you are seeing there, I need to locate two of them, right? One should be diminished and one should be magnified. And then as I was saying earlier on, and that's the reason why we set the object and the screen more than four apart. Else you wouldn't see the two images, right? One magnified and one diminished, right? The diminished one, the diminished one is, we call that one Y that one point Y. So let's look at how we do it. So we'll be moving this, see the lens. So let me position my camera well. Right. So we'll be moving the lens, right? You see the filament we have in the bulb is what we are seeing here, right? So you can see, that's the filament. But there's a position where it's very blare like this. So we start moving it from the screen, right? So we start from here. So we see a sharp image of the filament in the bulb, right? And then we name that point Y, then we record that one, right? So we'll be moving it. We'll be moving it till we see a sharp image. So that's the sharpest point, right? That's the sharpest point. Because if I move any further, it becomes blur. You see, if I move forward, it becomes blur. So the sharpest point is this one right here. So then, so then I'll take my meter rule mm -hmm. and measure the distance from here to here, right? We measure the distance from here to here as our y. We measure the distance from here to here as our y, right? So then we keep moving, right? We keep moving. So we keep moving till we see another sharp image of the filament. You see, this is the magnified one. So the first one was, you see, a diminished 
image of the filament, right? So the first one was a diminished image of the, this is the first one. We call that one from here to here is Y. From here to here is Y, right? So that one is diminished. Now we keep moving. Then we record, so we record from here to here as Y. Then we keep moving, we keep moving. You see, when it gets closer to, it becomes blur. So that's the fila filament. It's magnified by its blur. So you need to find a sharper one. So this is a sharper one. You realize that this is bigger than what we saw first, right? So when we get the sharpest image of the magnified filaments as well on the screen, then we record from here to here to as X, right? So from here to here, X. The first one is Y. The second distance is X. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. So this is how our table can look like, right? There are a lot of things on the table, but I'll talk about just a few ones, right? We are saying that this, this is our L, right? From here to here is our L. From the screen to the object is our L. And then for the L, we started at 60, if you remember. So L, so that's the first thing on the table. L in centimeters, supposed to be 60.0, right? Uh -huh. And then the next thing that we measured was Y, if you remember. So that first filament we saw, the dimensional one was Y, right? And then the next one was X in centimeters. So this is the table, right? This is the recorded values of the table. The rest is supposed to be, this is the table. L is the first one. The next one is Y. And the next one is X. So the next thing that's supposed to be on the table is supposed to be D, where D equals to your X minus your Y, and the unit is centimeters, right? So this is the next thing on the table. Then the next thing that you can put also on the table is supposed to be your L squared, your D squared, And then we can also do L squared, D squared. Then we can do one on L squared, D squared. And then also one on L. So don't forget the units, right? Don't forget the units. Don't forget the units. I don't have enough space, so let me just leave it this way. But the most important ones are this, right? This is what we use the setup. This is where we get from the setup. From here to here is our L. From here, here to the first point is our Y. From here to the second point, the magnified one is our X, right? So that's it. So that's for the first value. So the first value is 60. L is 60. L is 60. Then we moved. Then we got the first value, then we put that Y, that one is Y. We move till we get the second one, right? That one is X. Then we go to the next value, right? We can say the next value can be uh, 70, right? So we can say 70.0, right? It wasn't given. As to the difference that we are supposed to get, it wasn't given. So you can decide to increase yours by five centimeters, five centimeters. You can decide to increase your L by five centimeters. Somebody can also decide to do, increase their L by 10 centimeters because it's an experiment since it wasn't given. So let me use 70. So 70, you measure from here to here too, right? So for the 70, you measure from here to here, from here to the screen, the object to the screen, 70, right? So you move this to 70, then you can start again from this side. Then you on the ball, Right, then you on it, you start, you get the first one, that is X. You move further till you get the second one, that is Y, right? So they record. So that's how the values are recorded, right? So let's look at the graph. Let's look at the graph. Now, 
we are supposed to plot a graph of, we are plotting a graph of 1 over L squared D squared. We are plotting this, right, this as our Y component. We are plotting this as our Y component against this as our S component. So we are plotting this We are plotting this against this. We are plotting this against this, right? Okay, in doing that, we are getting something like uh, yes. we're getting something like this. Right. And then it should give us a straight line. Right. So now using this using this formula, using this formula, F equals to L over four L. Right. And then and now, if we multiply through by 4L, we'll get this equation, right? We'll get this equation. Then, we can say that since we are plotting this one over the whole of this against one over the whole of this, right? We can do this. One over this, right? So this should be, right? So the next thing we can do is that we can separate the x and y components. We can separate the x and y components this way. So that we can plot this against this. So comparing to the equation of it, to the linear motion equation, a plus bx. Some people say y equals to mx plus c. Right? It's the same thing, right? So comparing comparing to this is the same thing as this, as I'm saying. Y equals to a plus bx. Or, or y equals to mx plus c. So let me use this one, right? Right, we can say that our y, our y equals to one over L squared D squared. And then our S component equals to one over L and our slope or gradient. Gradient equals to uh, one. So we come back to this side. This is our component. This is our S component. And then this is our slope, our gradient, right? This is our slope. So our slope equals one over four F. And then mind you, we are finding, we are finding the focal length of the converging lens. So that's what we are heading towards. So when we plot this against this, we can come and, we can come and equate our slope to one over four F. Then from there, we can make F the subject, right? We can make F the subject, right? When we make F the subject, our focal length can be found as the slope over four, right? So this is how to, this is how you find the focal length of a converging lens using the displacement method. Right. Using the displacement method. Thank you.